Welcome to Badger Beer Hour for July 2024. Our lineup tonight includes news, Joel's Brewery Report, an interview with not one, but two people, James and Tommy from Enlightened Brewing, who have brewery travels, some beer events, and who knows what's in store with the last call. But first, here's the news. Hey, Chris. Hi, Landon. How are you? I am Dandy. How are you? Dandy. Wow. Dandy. Nobody says Dandy anymore. That, when you ask that. That's, that's, that's right. Nice. That is I'm a word that you. does not get used very often. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got some news, but not much of it apparently, huh? It's a little light this month, I think. You know, a little considering light. we had an extra week because of the RNC, um, I kind of would have expected a little bit, <clears> maybe, you know, 20 to 25% more news possibly. Alas, yeah. Uh, alas, not. we're gonna we're gonna start off with some uh, bad news because that's pretty much all the beer news that we get anymore. Wow. Well, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. It's a closing. Uh, last yeah. week, um, our Noggin Brewing Company in Kenosha, which uh, I, I I actually went looking for the explanation of why they are called our Noggin, our yeah. apostrophe Noggin, mm -hmm. um, and couldn't find it. But uh, yeah, they uh, they are closing. Um, uh, they announced it on the Facebook, and I kind of like this approach. They said they didn't say exactly when they were gonna, you know, uh, hang it up. And yeah. although they mentioned an, an, an anniversary party in the fall, you know, it seemed like they were gonna do that. And last year's was in in uh, mid November, so maybe you know we're looking at that kind of timeline. I like this because you know, as soon as any anything, as soon as you know that you can't do anything anymore, everybody wants to do it. Right. And I think it's, I mean, who knows, maybe they can kind of, and let me, let me just say this, here's the key, the key passage from this, uh, from this post that they uh, put up on Facebook. We are currently exploring options for our future, but do not have any solidified plans that we can share now, regardless of what next steps may or may not be for our noggin brewing. Uh, we can look back on these eight years and smile, the friendships that were made, the people that we met, the impacts that we had, and all the memories that we will cherish mean the world to us. Um, so it sounds like they're maybe trying to find a, a new, maybe smaller location or something like that. Sure. Um, in any case, uh, this brewery opened in 2016, um, and it was opened by, uh, home brewing, uh, brothers, Kevin and, uh, Jeff Brindleman. Um, and I have not been to our noggin, but the aesthetic from like the website and their, like, I'm, I'm, I'm I actually, I think, I, I think they were at a. Uh, uh, a festival that I was at in Milwaukee once, maybe or something. I yeah. don't know, but it's it's a weird aesthetic. Like the, their logo has like a skull and a bow tie, and like a top hat, like a like almost like a, a Mad Hatter type situation, and like a lot of the their imagery and the kind of decor in the tap room are in that kind of pulp comic book aesthetic kind of thing. Yeah, huh. it's interesting. I you know. It, <clears throat> never really heard a lot about these guys, but uh, obviously wish them the best. And uh, who knows? Maybe maybe it's not the end of this of this uh, chapter for them. Well, let's let's hope not. It's it's a tough industry to be in right now, um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, moving on, we'll uh, we'll talk about the U.S. Open. We're not talking about golf or tennis. Tennis? No, no. no. We're talking about beer. This beer. is a this yeah, is beer. the U.S. Open Beer Championship, um, and it, which builds itself very uh very modestly as one of the top three beer competitions in the usa oh not even not even going not i mean even. obviously gabf and the um uh they, what's their other uh the gabf competition and then there's another one that that that's run by the same organization the brewers or brewers uh, sure. association um that i think obviously it's getting out of the way of those two but hey we got we got some things to talk about and at least it's interesting you know yeah. Um, it, it does say that they, it's based out of, uh, Oxford, Ohio, and they say that they judge more beer styles than any other competition in the world. So that's something, okay. um, two point two two point here are the Wisconsin winners, yeah. um, under, uh, Brett beer, uh, we, uh, Wisconsin had a gold winner in Saza Waka, uh, like I'm guessing Rewaka and Saz hops in that one, sure. uh, from 1840 brewing in Milwaukee. Okay. Yeah. Friend of show. Yeah. Yep. Uh, in the milkshake IPA category, 
they've got a milkshake IPA category, so that kind of tells you how they get to the most beer styles. Right. Um, we have a silver uh, award winner in uh, Pineapple Comet from Mosinee Brewing Company up near Wausau. Okay. Um, in German wheat beer, we have a silver for Milwaukee's uh, Lakefront Brewery with uh, the their My Turn AJ beer. Which I think was uh, I think was that a spring release or maybe over winter? Yeah, that, that one, I think that one's been a while ago. I don't I don't think I yeah. had that one though. But yeah. All right. uh, so that was a silver. Another silver uh, for in the uh, barrel aged Brett slash wild category. There's a category you don't always see. Uh, yeah. Wrath of Kong from get this Flix Brew House in Madison. This is the uh, uh, I believe it's a chain of of. Um, Craft breweries in theaters, uh, and I got oh. I got a boy. You got a feel for uh, it's kind of a. I mean, I don't want to. We don't want to talk too much about the industry being down, but it's a challenging time right now, and that's yeah. kind of a double hit. Is like that's tough business times too, right? But uh, congrats to them for uh, Wrath of Kong, and uh, and then we had a couple bronzes. Uh, one was in chili pepper beer from. Um, uh the explorium here in mm -hmm. uh the milwaukee area ba chocolate chili which sounds actually pretty good and uh and then in the non-beer in a non-beer category well i think it's non-beer it's root beer adult is the name of the category so a malted beverage i don't think so <clears throat> because the winner was point point seems point brewery for or not the winner it was a bronze but uh for point root beer which i think is just their regular root beer and there's oh. also uh, root beer kids category i cannot square those it does not appear to be for the the other entries do not appear to be for uh like hard root beers oh, i uh, see so i can't explain i don't so know what makes one a maybe, kids or an adult maybe um, judged maybe, by adults judged by maybe kids. there's one like with a an, an, an unseemly label with like you know um <laughs> like butts or something on it i don't know i can't say i can't i can't say but those are the winners in the uh, U.S. The, uh, from Wisconsin in the uh, U.S. Okay. Open Beer Championship. Very good. It is one of the majors. It's one the, of the majors. One of the three the majors. U.S. Beer Circuit. Yeah. Beer competitions. One circuit, of yes. one of the top three majors. You're gonna get a Grand Slam for. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. I mean, 1840s got to go for it. They got to go for the Grand Slam. Right. Uh, let's talk about three sheep's uh, coming to Milwaukee. Yeah, I mean, this is a good, this is a cool story because I had yeah. always kind of, I've always thought of Three Sheeps as kind of like an honorary Milwaukee brewery, um, you know, really good brewery, uh, about an hour away in Sheboygan, but, you know, Milwaukee is their biggest market and, um, yeah. um, you know, their beer is is uh, very good and it's in, you can find it in a lot of places in Milwaukee. They've, they've always had good sales staff here and continue to, so. Uh, hats off to them, but uh, this is they're opening a tap room, um, and it's a tap room that's already here. It's it's the Hacienda slash Door County Brewing Tap Room, which opened on uh, on North Avenue here in Milwaukee on the East Side in um, 2019. Uh, a lot of East Siders will know that as the former uh, BBC Bar uh, location, and so they're they're kind of the way that this this place was set up. It's they had a bar with two sides and then there's du dual taps coming out of each side. So, okay. and what they, what they had with Hacienda, I believe was, was um, maybe some of those were uh, used on the other side, but a lot of them were mirrored. So they had, basically they had all this extra tap uh, capacity that they, that they kind of weren't really using. So, um, uh, you know, Hacienda or uh, Door County Brewing, which is, Hacienda is a brand of Door County Brewing right. um, that they launched, I think right around the time that this tap room launched um in 2019 they uh three sheeps produces almost all of uh door county and hacienda's beer now um hacienda was brought into the fold uh on a contractor alt prop or something basis um earlier this i think it was in february so that's an existing relationship and it's been i think they've been uh, door, or, uh, they've been making door county beers for for quite some time so um you know, there's an existing relationship, and I, I'm guessing that, you know, Grant uh, Pauly has been looking, you know, at Milwaukee for a while and kind of thinking about how to, you know, how to pull, you know, in, in talking about it, Grant was very, I think he was very careful to not 
like to you know this is dicey because you're you're basically opening competition with your with your customers you know in right. in right. having a space so i think he was real real cautious about listen we have our beers on tap and i think he said something like 50 uh accounts within like a mile or two miles or something of this um of this brewery and you know we want people to st- or this tap room and we want people to still go there so or, you know get, get them you know we want we don't want our customers we don't want our customers to suffer from this but i think yeah. what it, the what the agenda is is that you know that gives them a chance to have another location for special releases um gives them another outlet for those really like dude three sheeps has a ton of bangers on pretty much all the time uh at their tap room so i think it gives yeah. them kind of another way to to get those wolf variants and all their kind of barrel aid stuff is there for the um up there for their uh anniversary party in may june i don't know sometime recently and i mean they've got like 500 barrels with beer in them aging i mean it's wow. a huge it's a huge barrel age program and a lot of that stuff i mean they don't they don't really miss with that stuff i mean you can you know there's different levels of sweetness and adjuncts sure. and all that stuff that, that you might be looking for or not but they've got kind of something for everyone's brewery. I, I appreciate a lot. So, um, you know, having, having an outlet for those kinds of sales and, um, uh, pick up, you know, six packs to go and, and, uh, exclusive, you know, taproom exclusive bottles and stuff like that. That was definitely, and, and I think just being a citizen in this market that they a little bit more in this market that they're already kind of very present in, I think was a factor too. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the, uh, cool. that's the, I, any, que- I feel like I kind of just scooted through that one because I did some reporting on it, but any questions on that? I don't know that, what did I miss? I, I, I think I got the gist of it. They're sharing okay, a great, tap room great. with, they're sharing a tap room with Hacienda and yes. Oh, and it's, it's going to be called the, the best of it. it's now it's open now and it's called the, uh, tipple, triple tipple would be funny. Triple tap room and kitchen. Okay. So. So and, and Hacienda and Door of... County are still there, you know, Door County, Hacienda, right. and Three Sheeps being the triple. Very good. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, uh, normally we don't like to get too controversial, but never. Let's, we never do that. Let's, no. let's talk about politics, huh? And yeah. spotted cow, spotted cow and politics. Well, this is why, I mean, this is why we weren't here last week at our normally scheduled, uh, uh, bash your beer hour week. Um, cause you were at the RNC, the RNC was happening and I was kind of indisposed. Um, boy, uh, a lot of stuff to say about the RNC potentially. Oh, what is that? That's Who's doing that? Greg in the, in wow. the background. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, one of the things that, that, um, it seemed like everybody who came for the convention, anybody who talked to a reporter at least said that they had a really good time and Milwaukee was a great host. Fortunately, sure. they didn't really leave the whole security bubble to like go to any restaurant or bar anywhere else. But that, uh, that aside, one of the things that really hit home was spotted cow. Everybody's yeah. like, wow. Like the first tweet that I saw this was, uh, Robert Evans, who's like a kind of a, uh, he, he had, a, he had a lot of interesting coverage during the, during the RNC, but, uh, he said, you know, Wisconsin, I had never had a spotted cow before I'd heard of it. You, it's a lot, something to be proud of. And this is, this, it kind of became a thing, like people talking about spotted cow, the JS did a story on it that yeah. interestingly enough had all these people, Republican, you know, people from yep. around the country yep. uh, talking about spotted cow and did not mention the politics of the, 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 the clear and overt politics of uh, its ownership group in the, in the carries. Um, yep. Ron Johnson though, did point that out. He's, <laughs> He was quote he was quoted in the tweet saying uh, spotted cow is pretty good, but the owner is ultra liberal. Lightning Kugels is the conservative one, which to me is a perfect embodiment of, uh, you know why I, <laughs> politics and beer maybe just don't mix that up. I don't know because like if you want a good beer, yeah, it's a good beer, but it's not my politics. It's acknowledging that it's good, which is. Interesting. I guess. I guess I didn't know. I didn't know beer could lean. Even, yeah. I didn't know beer beer could lean one way or the well, other. Well, I mean, and it's true. I mean, line, you know, line, Dick Leinenkugel was. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What, the makers. Of commerce, I think, under um, under Republican <clears throat> governor and yep. uh, um, and you know that's their their politics is, is not uh, uh, you know it's I don't, I, I don't know if they 
I don't, I don't see them in, okay, I don't, all right, okay. Maybe not the con convert current iteration of Republican Party, yeah. but I don't, I don't really know. So I should probably just stop there. But, you know, they're, speaking of politics, we do have, I mean, we how can't could, talk about could, politics and beer without. We, how could we I go don't. a month without talking about Monaco? Oh, boy. That's what we got to do. Can can you believe that they're gonna do a Kamala Harris? Kamala, no. oh my God, I did it. They're I thought gonna, I thought doing, he I thought he doing did another her. Kamala Harris beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So another we're working one. on that. Yeah, I I'm I'm assuming this one's gonna have coconut in it. I don't know. Um, I, that's all I want to say about it. Just, just a little. That's it. Yeah, that's that's good. Okay, I, I think I, that's that's where it go from there. Landon, uh, that's other that's than the news. That is that is the news. Or that wait is that the news? No, it's not that the news. We oh, okay. we're not. I don't. We're think. not doing that. Anymore? I, think, I, think, I think no, we are, but we got to wait for Joel. Ah, oh, kills me. I, I'm, I'm threw my rhythm all off. I know. Hey, Joel. <laughs> you're you're muted, Joel. So, there you I'm go. So sorry, Chris, that I'm throwing you off. No, name. it's it's okay. It's okay. Get, I, I, no, I, had, I had I had no rhythm. I have no charisma, so it's, <laughs> it's totally fine. Well, we kind of already touched on you know a lot of that, which tends to happen with the news because a lot of these openings and closings are of course the news uh but to kind of put it into a nice package here we go again um with the brew report we touched on um i know we've already talked about modicum but we did not i don't believe we touched on lone girl opening up their second oh. location in madison um Big miss. most familiar uh they they that is their second location uh, so kind of an adjunct. Are they brewing there? I can't remember. I don't name. think so. I think that's the no, uh, that's the former Oso. Yeah, uh, yeah. So house, I didn't right? think that they were just they, they, that's just going to be yeah, an auxiliary just, tap just room. Um, nice we talked space, about though. coming back, so that is up there in Eau Claire. And then we touched on three sheeps getting kind of a. We're we're putting that in the other category when we do the the end there. Uh, but another tap room they're sharing there with uh, Hacienda in Door County. Um, brewery closings. We did have K point stepping out with modicum coming in. Um, I'm not including our because they have not officially closed. Um, as of yet, they are still technically open for at least a little while longer. Um, and that puts our current numbers here. Uh, as you can see sitting at 275 overall, when you include kind of the additional tap rooms and locations and kind of the other spots that kind of fall in between, um, with 225 individual breweries. Uh, and here's the county breakdown again. Again, I think I've only had to change this map once since I started it. Not not, not a whole lot of movement because especially when you have stuff going in and out of Dane County and Milwaukee, they're already kind of in that upper echelon very comfortably. Um, so I don't really need to make them any darker than they already are. I think people know that that's where the most breweries are. Um, but as always, remember, if you hear about a brewery closing or opening, especially if it's in a more rural, less covered part of the state, be sure to reach out to us because we may know, but it's also good to double check because we may not. Um, so yeah, you like, the like the, the really rural and uh, less covered part of Madison that I neglected. Yeah. To well, lone girl you know, opening yeah. into. <laughs> yeah. My bad. Sorry, folks. Uh, but uh, email, if you can't see, if you're not watching live, badgerbeerhour at gmail.com. And then you can find any of us on Twitter, Brewery Travels, <laughs> Wisconsin Beer Baron, Daddy Porter Blog, Taproom Travelers. You know where to find all of us. Um, and just shoot us a message if, if you hear anything. But yeah, otherwise, that's uh, kind of the update there for, for the brewery scene. Chris. And that is your Badger Bear Hour news for July. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the interview segment. And I'm excited uh, tonight to be talking to not one, but two brewery meisters, owners, co-founders of Enlightened Beer. We have James. And Tommy, guys, there they are. Hi, hi. Okay, uh, I'd like you, to kind of, you guys, to kind of introduce yourselves to the audience. Tell us a little bit about uh, Enlightened and it's kind of the kind of the the quick version of its of its uh, backstory and and how it came to be. Right on. Well, uh, my name is Tommy, co-founder of Enlightened Brewing Company. Um, we've been around 
since 2013. So believe it or not, we're the fourth oldest continually operating brewery in the city of Milwaukee. And that goes behind, <laughs> you know, your Miller, um, Sprecher. It, you know, it's not a perfect metric, but we say it. Um, so yeah, because the, the big boom in Milwaukee was in 2016, 2017. Yeah, 2017. When, yeah, that's right. uh, third Space City, uh, uh, Good City, uh, so many, really, I mean, so many. So, yeah, yeah. you guys were, were out, out in front of that. And we were small. You know, we started out in a 500-square-foot closet uh, in the Lincoln Warehouse and basically took a home brewery and got it commercially viable, certified. Got the permits and everything, and <laughs> be crazy Tommy. Viable is a is a variable term. Uh, uh, usable, I, uh, passable. James, I will also point out I'm James uh, of Lane Brewing Company, co-owner of uh, the fourth oldest continually operating production brewery. Um, okay, what is? Uh, tell me what is the what is the continually continually operating? Sounds like it's uh, fine right. print for somebody that I'm not thinking of that stopped for a little bit. Is it? In fairness, I put that stamp on it because I, I think through COVID, a lot of people shut down their production facilities, uh, okay. especially the smaller ones. And so I'll always say, well, if you if you hit the pause button or you moved locations or you did this sort of thing, then it's fine. But realistically, we're we're not far out of five yeah. or six if we're if we're going just the the timestamp of when you started. So, right. um, but a lot of those folks that that had that timestamp before us are, are now either on different projects or have moved out of Milwaukee city proper or the County in general. So I, I think it holds water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think, in fact, it's I, worth, I, I mean, mean you want to, but uh, I think it holds yeah. a lot. Like uh, we don't have a trophy for it or uh, you know, we're not we'll have to, cash or anything. <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to get over to the Milwaukee makers. Uh, uh, makerspace and and get you guys a a trophy for uh fourth oh, oldest it. continuously you know, operating we, we do this uh bike race every year with gathering place um awesome friend joe yato in river mm -hmm. west there and just to give you an idea of what our budget is for you know certain events and things the trophy we got is a second hand boxing trophy so whatever brewery <laughs> wins the uh hold i'm gonna correct you there tommy i'm sorry okay, go ahead. i'm gonna correct you that's an original print trophy. It cost us eleven dollars, and it's a boxing trophy. And when I went to the place on Old World Third, the guy said, um, "Do you want anything printed on the plaque?" And I said, "Yeah, the Great Milwaukee Brewery Bike Race." And he looked at me like I was an insane human being uh, because it's a boxer on top of the trophy. Um, so, you know, budget was eleven dollars. It's been passed back and forth between our, our good friend Joe and Gathering Place a handful of times. I think we have it, right, Tommy? We've got. Oh it. yeah, we do. Oh like yeah, two, three years in a row now, champs. <laughs> nice. So, well, that's. Uh, I mean, yeah. that's, that's pretty proud. That's got that should go on the uh, on the Facebook like about me page. Yeah. There you go. Oh, cheers. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Very nice. Well, uh, w Tommy, we we talked. Um, I think I think we met for the first time at uh, Milwaukee Magazine, where I my day job is. Um, uh, we had a couple events at, at Enlightened uh, this spring and summer with uh, related to the Top Chef. We had a couple watch parties there, and it was it was a lovely time. And we started talking. I can't I can't be around a brewery person without talking shop a little bit. And we talked a little bit about um, kind of the environment out there. I mean, you know, we mentioned it in the in the news and the and in the open with, you know, there's there's been a lot of hard news uh, this year. Um, hard meaning like difficult news. Um, of you know that that's been pointing to the environment just in milwaukee proper we've had uh city lights and company close can you kind of talk a little bit about in james obviously both asking both of these questions here um a little bit about what it's like out there uh selling beer in wisconsin in 2024 well it's not getting easier that's for sure i mean it's it's been tough out there and you know it's our job to try to figure out what's going on in the market but it's not always easy nobody's got a crystal ball about where trends are going or anything like that and it's sometimes even hard to explain like oh we're down five percent you know over last year or something like 
where did we feel like we've been working just as hard here and things are going well, but where are those numbers coming from? So it, we're just trying to figure out exactly what's going on and make adjustments as we can. But I think across the industry, at nationwide, but certainly in the city of Milwaukee and probably in Wisconsin, morale is low. It's harder to sell beer out there. It's harder to keep people's attention. Shelf space is constantly changing. Chain business isn't what it once was. Um, just for, just for a little bit of trying to dig it out, you know. Just for a little bit of context, what um, like can you talk about your distribution, your kind of tap, your, your balance between like say tap room, you know, kind of how, what what kind of like type of brewery you are, and and how that plays into you know um, what's working and what's a little bit more of a challenge right now. Yeah, it's kind of fun. I mean, it's fun out there to see what models different breweries have. You know, you got your very small tap room only or tap room focus. Maybe they don't even package their beer um, type of neighborhood brewery all the way up to large scale production breweries that do contract brewing. And maybe they don't even have a tap room. They just focus on production and co-packing and that kind of thing. Um, we're in the middle of that. We have a, a decent sized production brewery and a pretty big tap room. The capacity is 280 people. So we can, as you know, throw some pretty big events in there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I, I'll just say for everybody listening and watching, if you have not been out to, if you've been to Milwaukee and haven't gone to Enlightened, um, you're missing out. It's really, it's a really cool space. And there's a lot of, um, uh, they, you guys have a lot of like programming and stuff like I like Milmeg was kind of a part of that for for uh, a couple nights but um there's always interesting stuff trivia and um like just kind of off like different types of events than I think you you'd often see at, at a yeah, lot of tap rooms we're, we're really trying to get trivia off the ground so for those <laughs> folks that have nothing to do on Thursday please come on down and play uh our our, our friend Robbie is one of the, the the most hilarious trivia masters there is and you're gonna have a good time no matter what Nice. Uh, but I just want to jump in on the production side real quick because uh, I know I know this might be more of a sales and market conversation, and my insight is more on the you know nuts and bolts of the stainless steel. But um, you know it's been really fun to see us take our, our our brand from a very core thing that that was never you know hot as they say the kids say hot and 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 still find some success and I, and I think there's still some some wiggle room within the market um i think there's some breweries that you know do a lot of flash in the pan chasing some trend stuff and that's that's a model that works that's something that people intend to do and 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 do well um mm -hmm. for us it's always been you know what can we do to the best of our ability and what can we continue to do to the best of our ability and, and i think that that's gonna see certain breweries through i'm not saying that we're going to be the one that sees it through you know the writing's on the wall for a lot of breweries and we might not be the one that makes it through but you know does cream city bricks make it maybe maybe not right does, uh you know fantasy factory make it maybe maybe not who knows uh, you know that's in the eye of the consumer at the end of the day so mm -hmm. yeah and i will say something like um just may i don't know a bit of a testimonial the how much more difficult things are than they were maybe in like we didn't start at this point but like 2010 or before that and then going into 2016 there was a time where if you were a brewery and your liquid was good you were going to be successful and there were a lot fewer pieces that you had to think about and program and plug in and these days to keep the tap room humming along and to keep sales going in the market, everything takes a bit more extra effort. And you gotta like try to keep people's attention, find reasons for them to come to the tap room and stay, um, cause they're not just gonna come because you make beer. There's a lot mm -hmm. more breweries, that's part of it. Um, the trends, what people are drinking, I mean, maybe that's a factor, um, but it takes time to make beer. You know, you, you can, take a look at what's selling in the market. And by the time you get around to developing a recipe, getting the packaging done, design, marketing, all that stuff, you might've missed that wave. You know? Right. Well, and I, I don't, I get the sense that, 
enlightened is not exactly a chasing trends kind of brewery. I mean, uh, James, you kind of you kind of alluded to this, like get in your I've wheelhouse been, and. Chris, I'm going to interrupt you. I've been preaching that good word for a long time to my boy Tommy. Ever like, since I met him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, is is this a discussion internally about how about what we okay? Well, Every can day. you kind of talk through the different? I because. I was not expecting this to be honest. I, I mean, because just from the outside, you know, Enlightens beer tends to be, uh, to me, simpler, um, more traditional, simpler, not in a like a, but you know, like you're not going to win a silver for a milk, uh, a milkshake at pine pineapple IPA, right? I mean, it's beer, it's beer yeah. flavored beer we make, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, beer flavored yeah. beer, and and um, but what is what are the tensions within that? Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, I'm glad. Are you guys? Are, you guys are not in the same building. It looks like so there won't be any like no, no. jump one jumping no, into the other screen. Yeah, no fist fights or anything. But you know, we can. We've I've had a couple beers now. Let's air it out. Yeah, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I watched CNN. They had you know conservatives and liberals on the panel after Joe Biden talked. You know, going back to your RNC thing that you that you did earlier. So Tommy, let's do it. Let's. Uh, I'll. I'll. What what role should I play? So I mean. Just like we can cover the broad strokes, you know, it's yin and yang. There was a time when I first met James and I was making beer, I was home brewing, trying to get it going as Enlightened Brewing Company. I mean, most professional brewers would would laugh out loud at the recipes that I had and the, I don't know, just the wacky ideas and, and thinking about then scaling that up. Come on, Tommy, I didn't laugh out loud. Out. I just told you to do it differently. <laughs> you know, I had like six or six to eight different malts in there for no good reason at all. And hop schedules that were just like, you know, throwing darts. I mean, it was crazy. So I recognize that. Um, now, being in the position that we're in, it's more, I don't know, I look at it from less of a an enthusiast a beer enthusiast angle and more of a business mm -hmm. angle and obviously like any business they have a lot of goals but primary goal is to make money if you don't you're not going to be in business so obviously like i want to try to capitalize on on what's popular and what people are buying out there but and i'll give james you know credit, whatever. <laughs> oh. I recognize that, um, you know, I've learned that it's not possible always to just quick turn something. It can be really expensive to make beers that are on trend. And like I said, you might miss the opportunity. So, I mean, we do talk about it all the time. How can we make this happen? How can we play in that sandbox while staying true to what we do, what we want to do? Um, you know, and still making a business out of it. Is James is my character's characterization of Enlightens kind of brewing philosophy or approach pretty? Is that is that is that? Remind close? me what you said. I'll, I'll need to uh, remind. You. What, what did you beers say? beers that tend to be simpler and traditional. Yes, absolutely. I I, I yeah. think that that the, the main approach that I take as the production arm of Enlightened Brewing Company is. Let's make it clean. Let's make it easy. Let's make it repeatable. You know, the, the, the main thing is the repeatability. Um, you know, we're, we've, we've grown up a little bit larger than maybe we, we should have, arguably, to Tommy's point of, you know, maybe we're, we're a little bit bigger of a ship than can pivot. And hopefully the, the iceberg isn't dead ahead of us. But, um, you know, our whole goal is to be able to make a beer that lands or make a beer that that sells even mildly successfully. And then we can make it the same exact way every single time. Um, and, and to touch back on, to give Tommy some credit, his, his whole ethos when we first started has now entered back into our, our brewery with our pilot program called the Rough Draft Series. Um, and now what we're doing is money is no object. Anything is on the table. Let's just see what we can do. And so there is that that level of um, kind of tapper release only or kind of right. limited release draft only type model that that is working, that is successful and that every brewery needs to have, whether they're, you know, 
third space, uh, three sheets, Hacienda, yeah. whatever, whatever those, those folks might be, but they also probably should have the reliance on their core brand that can keep the lights on. You know, I mean, we're, we're looking at the, the new Glarises of the world. Spotted cow lets new Glarus do whatever they want. Um, and we all wish we could be spotted cow. We all wish we could be new Glarus, but the reality is that that doesn't exist, but in a vacuum that is new Glarus. So, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of dealing with that as part of the market. Um, and we're, we're hoping that we can all strike lightning at some point, get some extra dollars and, and, and keep moving the, the needle forward. But yeah, I'm, I mean, mad respect for new Glarus, but un unrepeatable. It's yeah. amazing what they've done. Yeah. And um, yeah, like that, like that is not, that is not the roadmap to success for all the smaller breweries. Right. I mean, yeah. not, you, you know, you, the, they exist now. You, you can't. Well, it's, it's me. That. I mean, you, you, you can, you got to you got to try to carve out a little a, a space and right. I, I, oh, okay. I, I thought that my analogy was great. It's me with a Michael Jordan poster in my room. I'm never going to be Michael Jordan. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, when you have to say it twice, it's not as funny. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We. I'll take another. Yeah, man. Let's take another set. I'll have another. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's nice that we've found space in our brewery for something like that, where we can um, get creative, worry less about money, smaller batch sizes, because that's the fun of it. You know, when we started yeah. home brewing, that was the that was the draw. It was so Is, cool. What do you What do you hear from? Um, uh, like your customers in the tap room about that like when when they come are they like well what's are they asking what's new or are they like yeah give me the moral luck give me the bricks give me the uh 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 the porter uh proper uh, prototype. 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 yes yeah i knew it was pro something um sure you know like our answer but i'm gonna jump in right away and say i think it's about 50 50. i think okay. half of our base in the tap room are always looking for the rough draft. They're always looking for something new. They're ready to try it. Then the other half are dead set on, I'm going to drink Kettle Logic. I'm going to drink Bread Idea. I'm here for Imperative. I'm here for Cream City Bricks. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then, you know, we've got those tourists that just try everything. So I think that is the case in our tap room. It's a pretty nice split between like loyal fans of a certain beer like cream city bricks or moral luck and people that are coming back because they want to see what's new and with the rough draft series we do have new things and i don't know they've all done really well i think no, no matter what the style is it's not like people come and they see that we've made hazy ipas so they want to drink those i mean right now we have a half half of ice, a Belgian blonde and a Cezanne as part of the same rough draft series. And those are consistently doing well in the tap room. So that's really fun to see. I think in the market, my impression is that it's like, if I have to hear what's new from you guys one more time, I'm just going to pull my hair out because we're so focused on <laughs> core brands and like good drinkable beer that has, a lot of legs out in the market, but some people, they just, you know, bars and restaurants or even. Yeah. When, when you say, when you say the people pulling their hair out are, are the buyers for decision makers for bars me, and restaurants. And I want to, okay. Hair okay. Because I'm oh, like, I see. Okay. You know, you know how, what's new? what's new. Yeah. It's like, well, we don't have anything that's new. The new stuff is in our tap room. How about another look at cream city bricks, you know? And that doesn't always land um, with certain, mm -hmm. bars. you know, there are some, it's just mixed out there, but I think that the, the, I don't know, people wanting new things all the time has slowed down a little bit from just before COVID. Yeah, but, for sure. Who knows? Yeah. Well, we, we talked about a lot about the challenges here. What, what is working and what's, what is, what are the what are the things that you're you guys are going toward right now and um you know it, it, kind of on on a, i guess on a bigger picture 
Go ahead, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, no. I, I guess I, you mentioned, I mean, you mentioned the pilot, the pilot system and the, the rough draft series. So, I mean, I'm assuming yeah. that's, that's part of it, right? Yeah. I mean, rough it, draft. is there, what, what is the size of that system compared to your, your main system? So it's interesting. We, we, uh, this was, this is a terrible thing to say on a podcast because it's, okay. recorded, but, uh, it was a shower thought of mine when we were shutting down our old facility. Um, it was kind of a, kind of a light bulb moment. And it said, well, what can we do? And so we took um, four three and a half barrel fermenters from our old facility, which is now New Barons, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. Um, and the idea was that we would use our main production facility, which is a 10 barrel brew house. And we would split that motherwort into three different tanks. And we would try to create three unique beers out of one motherwort. And then that fourth tank would be the, the finishing tank that we would move everything around in. Um, and we've been pretty successful with it. I, I, I'm actually blown away with how well it worked out at, for just a harebrained scheme. Um, but we do about 18, 15 to 18, six barrels. So three barrels of each beer. So it's, it's okay. a very, very small amount for our, <clears throat> our typical brewery, which, you know, we've got, 20 barrel fermenters and a 10 barrel brew house okay uh, our major core brands or our, or, or our bigger things are all done in 20 barrel batches they're all canned they're all can and draft and the rest is and then and the pilot program is just kind of small draft runs um, interesting so did did that saison the the belgian blonde the what was the third one that you mentioned uh the half of ice the, yeah. the, well the half that's got to be its own thing right I mean, you think so? All of it, all of it is made out of the same wort. They were okay. The yeast is the yeast is the driver in that in that rough draft. So the yeast okay. was, so it was a French. Oh, so draft. yeah, I guess a, I mean yeah, you can have wheat in a saison. You could have wheat in a Belgian yep. blonde. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, interesting. We good head retention on that Belgian blonde. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, so that's so that's, that's really cool. I mean, and is I mean, is ten is ten barrels just like too big of a swing or ten? barrel barrels like you know a full a full brew on the system is that just too big of a of a swing to take for a tap room only i mean that's 20 20 yeah. kegs that's i mean it, it ties up a lot of draft it, yeah. it ties up a lot of our cooperage uh but also it ties up a, a full 20 barrel tank so we don't have any 10 barrel tanks we don't have any bright tanks mm. it's all uni tanks so every single fermenter is a primary fermentation vessel and a finishing tank okay uh, so it it, it if we if we tie up ten barrels, we're going to tie up a lot of our cooperage in just one beer, mm -hmm. and we're going to just tie up that twenty barrel tank for a long period of time, maybe longer than we need to. Um, so the the smaller tanks, the pilot tanks, are are pretty successful. Um, if something goes particularly well, like if we have a hazy IPA that that sells through the roof more than the other ones in that series, then there's no reason why we wouldn't throw a 10 barrel batch of it together, but we probably want to couple that with packaging and yeah. that we have to make the decision on, you know, what does the packaging look like? How long does that take? You know, it, 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 there's a lot of variables that go into play with our kind of more factory based style of, of production mm -hmm. brewing than just our rough draft series pilot. Yeah. Brewing. So yeah, that's, I mean, without having a, a dedicated like pilots, like a small, brew out like a mini brew house or something that, that makes it really yeah. tough to yeah. to kind of yeah yeah but that being said so, since we do it on the 10 barrel brew house that we normally mm -hmm. operate with it's extremely easy to scale up any of the beers that we do to a 20 barrel batch or sure. a 10 barrel batch just so, do a double you're just basically doing a double batch on yeah. on a full yeah there's no yeah. there's no different calculations for a different brew house to a larger brew house so okay that makes it a lot easier right right so that that is working in the tap room and that's been really fun to see and it's allowed us to keep doing it which is awesome um the some of the programming we've been doing in the tap room is fun and it, it also has been working our cribbage nights are great um you know even just birthday parties weddings the big space that we have watch yeah. parties you know that's been really fun and like a dream come true for the tap room it's just really cool to see um out in the market that that's the question i'm always asking when i'm out i'm like what is uh 
what are people buying? What's working for you guys? Mm -hmm. What's selling right now? And part of the reason I think beer is down, everybody's like struggling a little bit more than they have been is because people seem to be drinking a little bit less. And when they are drinking, they're drinking less beer. I hear a lot about high noon being super popular, your hard iced teas, you're ready to drink cocktails. That stuff seems to be having a moment. And then also the macroeconomic forces are affecting all of us. So it seems like economy brands, if you want to call them that, <laughs> the cheap <laughs> stuff is uh, is doing okay or better than a lot of us. Like Modelo is just going gangbusters right now. Mm -hmm. Like, in fact, I saw, I saw a statistic that... really good. Yeah, I mean, right. I drink it. Um, yeah. The... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, import beer right now as a category is way up, and it's pretty much all because of Modelo. Yeah. So that's a factor. I, I saw just, I think it was just today or yesterday, I saw that, uh, was it uh, Mick Ultra passed Bud Light into number two behind Modelo as the number, you know, the, as far as like the best selling beer, I think it's in the, uni the United States. Got usually I check those. usually I check my sources a little bit more before I say stuff like this on, on the air, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, the top of the beer world is just a totally different thing than what we talk about on the show and and I'm sure what you guys are dealing with. But I mean, of course, it's affecting you in a more much more direct way. So, all right, well, uh, what's coming up for Enlightened? What do you guys, what, what's, is something exciting in the tanks that's, that, that's coming out soon that you're excited to have put in front of people? What big events, what's going on? couple of things, I think broadly, um, we've developed this lager program over the last year or two that has been awesome, really fun. That's what I'm drinking right now is a Moral Luck German Pilsner. Really nice beer, yeah. We kind of roll that into our Merzen style, uh, the Vienna Circle for Oktoberfest. So that's actually coming out pretty soon, like it or not. You know, they are released <laughs> earlier and earlier every year. I don't hey, like at, at least you waited till july or august and Thank instead you. of june so <laughs> yeah so that's coming out vienna circle it's really awesome we tweaked it a little bit this year the recipe and it's just better better and better it's tasting really good and then the lager that we do at the end of the year is called cosmic nihilism which is a czech dark lager um super fun to have that and then once a month we're releasing rough draft series beers so it's, it's always like a hazy here and there and then some belgian stuff maybe some strong stuff um, we're doing Milwaukee brew fest this year for the first time in like seven years. I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah. We, so, we fell off the fest list and we're back on it a little bit. Uh, is that, that's the one on the lakefront, right? Yeah. yeah. I just want to give a quick shout out to the lager program to our brewer, Tyler. Um, he was the one that really developed that for us and he's, he's been crushing it on the recipes. Um, I want to say that I can take credit for all those, but, uh, I have nothing to do with them. I just help him make them. So uh, Tyler Killips well done, is James. doing a very good job in the lager side of our world. So nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then just more. In... <laughs> Thanks. That's really good. The, the effects are. Just you never know when you never know when that stuff's going to come in. Production the booing value, was really off putting. Very... I, I was not ready for that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. This is some high ABV production. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, and lots of events in the tap room always, if you guys want to book any private events, semi-private birthday parties, whatever, check out our tap room. It's a really good option. Can't, can confirm. All right, James, Tommy, thanks so much for coming by on Badger Beer Hour and, uh, best of luck. Uh, and I'll see you down at the tap room pretty soon. Pleasure Take speaking care. with you. All right. Later. Hey everyone, and it is me again, Joel Geyer, aka Brewery Travels, and we are back for another edition of Badger Beer Travels. And this is going to be one of the larger cities that we've done so far. Uh, we're going to go down to the extreme southeast corner of the state in Kenosha. And no, I did not time this up on purpose uh, with the announcement of our noggin, which we will get to uh, here in just a little bit. Uh, it's just the way it worked out. But first things first, just a little bit of background in Kenosha. It's about 100,000 people. Uh, many of you know if you're from the southeast part of the state, it's less than an hour to get there from, from Milwaukee. 
right on the border there pretty much with uh, Illinois. Um, Washington Park, Park, which I found this when I was doing a little bit of research. I found this to be kind of a fun little fact. The country's oldest operating velodrome. Um, which is for the the bicycling, which I thought is is quite something. Um, I know they also, if you have kids and you're going down there, they got the Dinosaur Discovery Museum, uh, the the beaches and everything, because they are right down there on the lake. So plenty to do besides beer, but of course, we are here to talk about the beer. And so getting started, as always, with a little bit of the lay of the land to talk about, there are four breweries currently in Kenosha. It sounds like it's possible that we may be getting down to three. Uh, but Rustic Road and Public Craft, you can see there, are both located downtown. Um, Kenosha Brewing located a little bit to the southwest. And our noggin is located right along the highway. Um, for any folks that are driving from Milwaukee to Chicago or just driving to Chicago in general from most parts of the state, you most likely have driven directly by our noggin and can see you and or and can see the brewery right there along the highway. Uh, but we will start downtown at Rustic Road because they are also the oldest brewery uh, by three months. I was reading an article, apparently it's a little tongue in cheek because uh, public came around just three months after that. But the name was inspired by Wisconsin's Rustic Roads program, which I did a little Googling on because I was not familiar with this. Uh, but the Rustic Roads program was created over 45 years ago to provide hikers, bicyclists, motorists, an opportunity to leisurely travel through the state's scenic countryside, and there are now over 126 designated rustic roads covering over 760 miles across 61 east. Uh, I think that is, you know, an interesting little little tidbit because I, I certainly was not aware of it, uh, but they emphasize that they produce in small batches, which is very obvious when you go onto their website, and you see that as of now, there was 28 different beers on tap. So if you enjoy beer, you are going to most likely find something that you want to try there. Uh, they host several weekly events, you know, open mic night, beer, bingo, family feud, a lot of the classics. Uh, they also have a food menu that includes different uh, wings, sandwiches, soups, salad, tacos, fish fry, etc. cetera. Um, some examples of their beer. Uh, so some of their kind of go-to flagships include the Hazelnut Harvest, a red ale, um, the, Simmon, the Simmons Island Imperial Blonde, uh, the Parkside Pilsner. And on their site, although it says that this I have on the top, their Strasbury uh, Milkshake IPA. Apparently on their website, it says that they, they pretty much always have a milkshake on milkshake IPA on tap. Uh, it, it varies, uh, but, you know, they also I also threw in there a Belgian DeBell, but uh, yeah, so they are located right downtown there, and just around the corner, basically, is public. And they opened in 2012, and for those uh, that were following the no news, I know that we talked about this when it happened, but they were purchased by Lakefront Brewing Company um, here in Milwaukee. So it's it's an interesting, it was an interesting kind of surprising purchase when, when it did happen, but they are keeping it as is because they want to keep that brand in Kenosha. Um, I know one of the quotes, I think, from one of the articles was uh, talking about how they feel like Kenosha is underserved in terms of the number of breweries versus the population, which may become even more so if Arnoggin uh, does, in fact, close. Um, they have their slogan, beer for the people. They also serve food there, um, including, you know, some of the options I saw, wings, burgers, sandwiches, variety of games as well to play. Um they did move into their larger location in 2020. I, I skipped over that. Uh, so I have actually not been down there since they moved to that large location. Uh, their original location was actually only a couple blocks away. So they have remained downtown throughout all of this. Uh, you can kind of see here, they again, similarly have a lot of options on tap. They run the gauntlet from more traditional things. Um, you know, you, you see the light lager, a, a blonde ale, you know, you throw in the hazy and an Irish stout to doing an apricot saison and a honey jalapeno margarita sour. sour. Uh, so this is another place that I feel like between those two that they're only a couple blocks apart, you could really run your palate through a gauntlet um, if you go and want to really push yourself and try some different things. Uh, the next spot is Kenosha Brewing Company, which is a really interesting spot because it's located in a former monastery that nearly, nearly a century ago, local monks were brewing there. So, and there was actually a brewery with the same name that operated in 1936. Uh, but fast forward to today, 
And they also, you know, they serve plenty of food. And one of their big things is that they had an event. They have a large event banquet space. You can host up to 180 people. And funny enough, during, when I visited there, they were actually setting up, um, including the bar area, for a wedding reception. Uh, so th they are a little more on traditional side uh, when it comes to to beer, uh, in terms of you know cream ale, your American IPA, a Marzen rye beer, uh, you know barrel aged coffee stout. I know that was one of the big ones that they had there. Uh, so another little spot there that I think for for events in particular uh, is you know a good one to have for the Kenosha area. And finally, then we get to our noggin, saving the best or the the one here at the end here for the one closest to the highway. Uh, can be a good you know stop, very convenient stop if you're just passing by and not going to drive all the way into Kenosha. Um, but I know Chris mentioned earlier about the interesting name. And that name is actually the two brothers put their noggins together. That is kind of their whole uh, gist, I, I guess. I, I, that's what it says, at least on the website. Um, and if you look closely at the logo, uh, the, the hat has a two and a seven uh, cards on, on, their, on the hat there. And that is because there are two brothers working seven days a week on the brewery. That is what I was told as well. Uh, so they opened up back in 2016 in a former automotive garage. Uh, the web, their website states that they brew 90 different beers a year. Uh, the, they have the pizza shop there for food. It's unaffiliated, but you can get pizza there as well when you're trying some of the beers. Um, the uh, reason, and again, I, I pulled up. So this is the post just to kind of give everybody a little bit more background to all the family. For, Chris already touched on all this. But that's the post. If you're reading this, take a screenshot or whatever. Uh, but it sounds like they may still be trying to find something, but it's not going to be at that current location. So I'm sure we will keep our eyes on that for any official announcements. It does say in there that they are planning on doing another um, anniversary party in the future before the, you know the end of the year. So obviously they will be you know a, around for a little while longer if you're wanting to get down there and check them out. Um, because they brew so many different beers, obviously, you know, they, they similarly run the gauntlet. Um, some of their flagships there, you can kind of see the, the Hefeweizen cream ale, uh, the hop rocket Rider IPA clown casket, Imperial red ale, the blue raspberry sour and the Russian Imperial stout. Um, so yeah, I, I really feel like, you know, Kenosha brewing is the only one that kind of sticks a little bit you know, down the middle in terms of their style. And they, they throw a few things in there, but the other three breweries in Kenosha really do offer a ton of, of options. And like I said, they offer more traditional things if that's what you're looking for. And, you know, I know we were just listening to hearing about how folks want to try something new, whatever's new. Well, these guys, these, these breweries are doing that for sure. Uh, so they, they definitely will do that. And also I, I should have included some pictures on here. Uh, but this will be kind of a little uh, homework assignment for the listeners is to go and Google, go to their website and look at the artwork for the can for our noggin because they got some wild stuff and it's it's all very much a specific theme. So it's 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 a neat, neat spot there. Um, so, again, I will go back here to the slide to kind of wrap things up for the lay of the land in case people wanted to look here. Um Kenosha again only has four and possibly down to three breweries. So it'll be interesting to see. And, and one of those three just went through uh, the purchase with, with Lakefront. So a lot of changes coming to the Kenosha beer scene, potentially um, it will be interesting kind of track both how public and, and our noggin, how those shifts occur. Uh, but yeah, I think it, it's definitely worth a, a little brewery excursion down there. And if you're in the Southeastern or just Southern part of the state, it's, it's definitely convenient. Uh, and there's enough there to, to keep you busy. So as always, remember whether it's where you're living or where you're visiting, be sure to drink local everywhere. Oh, here, Chris, what's up? <laughs> yeah, so I just, there was, you mentioned the the kind of like, kind of low brewery density in Kenosha. And yeah. that was actually a reason that uh, Russ Klish spoke with yep, um, the writer true. who, yeah. yeah, I mean, he, he, he said like, you know, and this is obviously even before, like with our noggin, you know, still in the picture, which is unclear at this point, but um, he said, you know, this is a big, this is a big market and, um, you know, public is, is kind of the leader in, in, in the, in the, in this market um, as far as local beer goes. And, 
we saw a really good opportunity. And I think, you know, we already saw that they invested in um, a new branding, which is not reflected here, but which is, you know, but that's fine. But um, I'm not sure how, how public that is yet, but um, I think it'll be interesting to see what Lakefront can do with, with, uh, with this market. Yeah. Uh, you know, with a public, you know, the public brand and, you know, they've, they've got, they've got maybe have a little bit more leverage on, on distributors and, um, you know, the accounts and, and everything. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and just like talking about that whole Southeastern part of Wisconsin, I mean, when you look at Racine, even there's only the one brewery there now and you have to go over to Burlington's got the pair. And I know at one point, you know, uh, Kings and convicts was supposed to build that huge facility (laughs) and that never happened. So that, that area, you really almost like, once you start dipping into Illinois, there's, there's a little more action with breweries, but that is definitely an area where if you just, if you're just looking purely at the population standpoint, that that's, arguably the one area in the state that has the most room for growth when, when you're looking at it from that standpoint. Yeah, sure. totally agree. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, Greg, yeah, we can, uh, I, I said, I can say the line again, but it's uh, wh- whether it's where you're living or where you're visiting, be sure to drink local everywhere folks. Greg. Yes. Hello. Hi, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> we should call this we should call this it takes Greg an hour to get on screen. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're on screen. I'm glad you're on screen. Yay! Let's talk let's talk about let's talk about some events. Yeah, let's get on here. Um I'm not uh I didn't pull up our normal one, so I might have to we might have to jump around here real quick, but um, that's all right. Um, we talked about Malt City Brew Fest really quick last year. Yeah, month, yeah. Um, but it's definitely coming up here in three days. It's in downtown Manitowoc. Has thirty uh, breweries here. Um, this is one I think we've covered every year since we've been back. Yep. Um, so it might be sold out. Y'all are gonna have to get details on that. But I believe the weekend is talking about being nice to us everywhere. So I think so. Yeah. Uh, for the most part. Yeah, that's good. So um we have uh these are kind of left over from yesterday, so they're probably not on our, yeah. our last month, but um Milwaukee Brew Fest is also this Saturday. Um this is the part of summer where there's like, you know, six things during one day. Right. And you just have to almost like, you know, if you're a beer person looking for something to do, <laughs> you're gonna almost have to flip like a six sided <laughs> coin or something. And but Milwaukee Brew Fest is another classic beer uh, beer fest that's been going on forever. Um, y'all are going to need to check those um those deets uh on the website for sure because I'm not sure you know where they're at as far as tickets go. So right, uh, ran through those real quick. Um, uh, working draft, y'all. Um, I don't know why this one's August. I guess I guess, I guess we're into August already. Yeah, um, we're almost almost in August, sadly. Yeah, working draft check yeah. uh check festival. Uh Chris is excited about this one. I'm not sure if he's going or not, but um you'll know on the social media. But uh uh working draft loves the loggers, man. Yeah. So they're gonna love the textile loggers. Yeah, and I know you've I know you've I wouldn't say ranting and raving about it, but I know you like them. I do. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they're not so great to pour, like when you're, when you're pouring it, when you're working behind the bar, but drinking mm-hmm. them is fun. Yeah. Those side, those side poles are great. So, uh, yeah. Lyndon, are you familiar with the, the Czech milk pour? I am. Yeah. Um, you want to, you want to, you want to tell us about that a little bit? So the, the way those lucre faucets work is, uh, if you just crack it open just a little bit, it's letting it's letting just foam out uh foam that is beer not not our typical foam that that is the head the uh airy type head that you would see on a normal beer but these side poles are letting out beer that's coming out as foam so and it's light um and milky really so 
they'll they'll give you a little pour about this big and it'll all be milk and you just shoot it i mean sometimes you can get a full glass of of a milk pour i've done that um you can shoot the entire thing but that's you know you toast and you uh toss it back very nice. So it looks like uh looks like a two day event here and then it looks like Friday yeah. is when they're gonna do that milk pour. I guess yeah. it takes longer and you all have to be patient. So Yeah, it I takes forever they... to pour those. Yeah. Okay, okay. So that's why they're giving everybody a warning. Yeah. So that's a nice, you know, happy <laughs> hour Friday kind of thing. And then it yep. looks like Clint, our friend Clint, um will be uh having a little bit of a co- uh, conversation about beer pours and check style beer on two on a uh, 2 p.m. on Saturday for your yep. Chuck style beer geek people who can't get enough of them like Landon. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this looks like a fun time. Yeah. Um, hopefully I can scoot over there. Uh, really, really good. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, next we have this one. I don't know if you want to talk about this one though. Yeah. Das Fest, which translates to the fest. Uh, yeah. Friday, August 2nd to Sunday, August 4th. So three days. Uh, at the Bavarian Beer House down in Glendale, you get in for free. Um, they'll have all sorts of stuff, I guess. Stein holding contests, corgi dachshund uh, races, individual races, corgis and dachshunds. Uh, glass blowing. Uh, if you're not into beer, you can have wine. Of course, they'll have beer and all the German food that you could possibly eat. Uh, it sounded like they'll have some German vendors. Um, games, all that kind of stuff. So basically an Oktoberfest celebration in August. So yeah. Yeah, you know how that goes. We'll yeah. leave that. But um great place, great stop, mm-hmm. all that all 100%. that things, all the German things. Y'all love it. Uh never heard of this one, but man, look at it. It's a whole weekend too. So that's yeah. gonna be fun. Um right. so then we have um Next, we have the same weekend again, y'all. Y'all just gonna have to pick same city, right? It's wild, uh, Mobcrest, uh, weird beer fest. Right? Yeah, weird I'm fest. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, Henry's Henry's doing some great stuff with Mobcraft, of course, still. So that's that's great. Uh, they're celebrating their 11th anniversary. So we know that before they moved down to Milwaukee, they were in Madison. So they've been eight years now in milwaukee respectfully before you go further yeah i just want to talk a little bit about mobcraft yeah um and i'm when i say respectfully um it's because about what i'm about to say is probably not going to be the nicest sounding thing sure but i just i if, if of all the breweries that i've came up with Lyndon, around here yeah, yeah. I, I would have never guessed that mobcraft would be still kicking it and kicking it hard it appears and um, just because of the model, I was always afraid of that model where they let their their fans, you know, that they I think right, they got it a, right. away from it a little bit, but I still think they do that actually. But the core used to be the fans pick the beers and we make the beers. Right, and they used to be like, well, I don't really trust the fans that much. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y'all, yeah, y'all want yeah. people like me making right. your, you know, raspberry lemonade, uh, yeah. raisin brand beer. Y'all, is that what y'all, you know what I mean? But Bobcraft has, man, they've really done well. So, um, this is one of their biggest events of the year, right? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, so I think they're moving it to a different location this year, or no? Or no, 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 no. It's at the tap room. My bad, my bad, my yep. bad. Yeah. Um, but it's weird fest, so they make. Uh, it's funny because you know they make weird beers. That's pretty much been right. their whole thing. Um, so uh, I'm sorry if I interrupted you, but no, you're fine, to, man. Uh, so wear your wear your weird costumes. Uh, they're gonna have high flying mondo lucha wrestling, live music, food, belly dancers, face painters, vendors, and then all of the weird beers. So, uh, and they're this year. They're going to have Mermaid Echo, a real-life swimming mermaid. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've, I mean, we've seen we- real-life mermaids in Montana, but never in Milwaukee. So 
that'll be different. Um, so here, here's just a, a, a small taste of, I, I guess maybe it's all of their, their beer releases. They're going to have a bloody Mary brunch, a spicy bloody Mary and spice, uh, inspired beer, Baja buds, uh, lemon lime Weiss with blue raspberry five pepper, Amber, uh, it's got garden, hot peppers, uh, made in an Amber beer, funky pebbles, uh, sour ale with the flavors of fruity pebbles. Mm. Yep. Mm, okay. And their um, 11, 11 year anniversary barrel aged crush smoothie style. Mm. Okay. I don't know. I don't know that about a smoothie, smoothie barrel aged. Yeah. That actually sounds like the best one I've heard. The rest <laughs> of them. I, I don't know. Baja I, buds. Of course, I you know, know, I would try them. You know yeah. I would try. So. If you're gonna, if you're gonna go, you may as well. All right, 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 right. 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 So, yeah. um, here's some of the shenanigans that they have: belly dancing. There you go. Yeah, wrestling. Uh, more belly dancing. More wrestling. Ooh, dad strength. Okay. Um. So this is happening all day. Uh, this sounds fun. It really does sound fun. And a mermaid. Um, yeah, and then they have this little thing where you can book your reservation at the world's smallest island party. Um, when I took this <laughs> little screenshot, y'all, um, all the tables or all the, the times are open. So uh, there you I'll go. jump in. This is Get next in. next weekend, not this weekend, is um, Wild Fest, y'all. Um, it's yeah. uh, Weird Fest. Sorry. Weird Fest. Weird Fest. Block party. 11 to 7.30. August uh second or I'm sorry, August third. Yeah. So that should be a hoot. That should be a hoot. If uh mm-hmm. and if and if and if you don't like weird things and you're an IPA drinker, same weekend, Saturday, August third, two to five, third space brewing is doing the eighth annual Wisconsin IPA fest. So they'll have uh, IPAs from 40 plus breweries from around the state, hundreds of beers to sample, food trucks, DJ, and a bunch of other fun things along the way. Uh, there's VIP tickets, general admission tickets. Uh, VIP, I think, is 85 if they're still around, 55 for general admission. Uh, you get a bunch of stuff included, all that good stuff. Designated driver tickets if you. Uh, get a designated driver which of course we always recommend that you do yeah ipas if those are your thing IPA yeah, and it says we'll now yeah it says we'll announce which brewery will take home the title of wisconsin's best ipa as voted on by experts experts i think one of the experts is someone that we know yeah Near and dear to us. <laughs> i believe i but, believe he did one of these shows live from IPA yeah, Fest that, one year. Yeah. That's why they should put the quotes near the experts is what I'm saying. <laughs> but, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to nip it here. Sorry. My bad. My bad. No, no, no. He ain't, no, on, no. He ain't on the screen. So it's, we can, we can poke phone him at him all, all we want. Yeah. yeah. We can run him down and he, we don't have to say anything. Right. But right. Um, now, nah, um, uh, Chris does say that uh, this is one of his favorite. Um, he did, I, ha- I have heard him say that this is one of his favorite beer events. Yeah. Um. And our friends at Venture, I believe, took second one year, or did they win? I don't know. Fun event, y'all. If y'all big IPA people, great uh, host. Uh, Third Space is a great host. They got a great little spot there for everybody. Um, this is a fun event. So for all you IPA hopheads, jump in, jump in, jump in. So, uh, without further ado, um, we have the Great Taste of the Midwest, one of the biggest, if not the baddest, uh, beer event. In this spitch we call Wisconsin. Um, but before we get to the great taste, it's great taste eve, y'all. Um, it's become a tradition for many to visit and breweries to partner with local establishments to showcase their beers. Um, so even if you missed out on great taste tickets, if you did, hook, call me. I can I can tell you how to navigate this. But you'll still be able to find many opportunities. It's almost like um it's almost like Christmas Eve down here in Landon. 
Yeah. Um, everybody goes out the night before. Where why would you go out the night before the great taste? Because there's just so much, you know, people are out and about. There's different uh, you know, beer. I couldn't put them all here, y'all. Um, the different events. So you'll have to go to greattaste.org, uh, the Great Taste Eve. If you're in town for it, you have to go out and you have to do some. It's fa- it's fabulous. Um, again, I can't, I can't, I literally cannot put um, all of them here. Also, there's some breweries like Venture who aren't in this year, but who are doing events. So right. check that out, y'all, when you get there. Um, so then the Great Taste is the August 10th, y'all. We will not, um, we will, we won't. Uh, the next Badger Beer I won't be until August 17th, which is Friday, uh, Wednesday after. But um, so great taste is this uh, week. Uh, I'm sorry, this month coming up. Uh, again, biggest, baddest um, beer festival in Wisconsin, probably history of Wisconsin. Um, if y'all don't have your tickets yet, um, again, hit me up, hit somebody up. We could tell you about that. But you should see Joel and Chris, um, I believe, are attending this year. Um, so you can see them around, harass them. Um, there will be about 200 breweries there this year, y'all. Um, I don't think it's going to make 200. It's going to be in like the high 190s. Um, there'll be about 30 uh, rookie breweries. Um, I don't think it'll reach 30, but it'll be high 20s. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are about 100 and uh, 1,400 beers. I don't think it'll reach that, but it'll be high 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and attendees, 6,000 sold. I don't know if it'll be that, but you know how that goes. You know, a sellout doesn't have all the people in it. Right. But, um, so those are um, it's just going to be a normal great taste, y'all. Really nothing different than if you've been before. Uh, let's hope for good uh, weather. Um, and it's just a wonderful event. Everybody loves it. And one of these years, and then we got to get you down here for that. One of these years when the kids let me get out of the house in the summertime. Yeah, soon. Your kids are getting to that age where soon you're going to have to be chasing them. So, um, <laughs> instead of yeah. them chasing you. Right. But, uh, so, uh, you know, the Great Taste has one of the best um, locations ever for a beer festival. This is where uh, I took this picture in 16, 17. So, uh, yeah, look at that Milwaukee nice. Brewery. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times. Um, love the taste. Y'all should love it, too. So uh, we got one more event landing after the taste, and that is, oh, I didn't mean to do that, uh, Wisconsin Donut and Beer Festival. I yeah. Think, I believe this is the first of it. This I believe so. Year. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, ha- happening Saturday, August 17th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. One, you go. Yeah, one to six. We've talked about Wisconsin Brewing Company Park before. So that's where the Dock Hounds play. That's where they they have that little brewery in the stadium, which is kind of cool. Uh, so the whole donut and beer festival will be there. If you like donuts and beer, who doesn't like donuts and beer? Um, one of a kind donut options, 150 plus beer, ciders, seltzers, entertainment for everybody. You can bring your kids. How great is that? Each ticket provides an all-inclusive experience. Uh, you'll get free food and drink sampling tokens with your tickets and a cup and a branded lanyard and a, a fun day. Uh, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to getting to that, um, you know, that baseball with the beer and all that. I'm not yeah. really a baseball fan, but I do like to go to the game, you know, especially the minor league games. Yeah. Um, city games. I don't know. I like, a, you know, a major league baseball game. But yeah. um, I have to go, Lynn, and I have to go and do the right. tailgate and all that. So yeah, um, yeah. that's a really good event for that, to check them out. Um, Lake Louie's beers are always been solid and fun. Uh, Wisconsin beering, yeah, they're pretty good. Um, yeah. So it should be a fun event, y'all. You should be able to yeah. um, check that um, out. Time. Yeah, when is that again, Lynn? Uh, is that August the, uh, 17th. It's a Saturday. So, so that's the weekend after... Um, the great taste. Yep. And actually we'll be we'll be here August twenty first. My bad, y'all. So I fibbed y'all, but I got it right. So <laughs> yeah, and thanks for uh helping yeah. assemble these these uh events and helping me deliver them. We'll yeah. see y'all soon. Cheers.
<laughs> well, we'll leave that side conversation about Mobcraft and the side conversation over there. Um, y'all tripping out over there. That's making me laugh. But anyway, uh, it's, it's an interesting brewery and one that, frankly, I, I, I do respect. I do respect. I like, I like oh, Mobcraft. Yeah. yeah. They've they've really earned it at this point. There's really no question yeah. about that. So um y'all may have may or may have not noticed. In fact, you probably didn't notice because you probably are trying to watch us on Twitter, but we're no longer on Twitter because we have to have premium accounts to stream there. So we're gonna figure all this out, y'all. Um we're gonna make sure we get back in front of your faces here. Um if you would more. like to sponsor uh our uh the the Badger Beer Hour uh mm -hmm. Twitter uh <laughs> We uh, we we'd love to we'd love to talk about your uh, your business uh, and uh, in, in exchange for <laughs> hooking us up on getting back on live streaming on Twitter that'd be that'd right. be nice. Yes, and when we are on Twitter, we have a nice reach there, and when we're not, yeah, um, clearly we don't. So there's that. <laughs> well, we'll we'll get this out. We'll get this out on replay. It'll be it'll be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get, so, we'll get uh, an audience. Joe and I, um, you know, do a good job of curating um, content over there and making sure uh, your beer events and your beer news is given to you on almost a daily basis, even though um, we're lazy and we only show up for you for uh, once a month here. But anyway, um, we're, we're there all day, every day. Uh, of course, Chris's Twitter is um, always active. Uh, obviously, uh, Joel is still running around the country uh going to exotic places for beer so he's there and then landon of course is um you know still doing tap room travel stuff too so uh check us all out y'all um this is um this is we're still on through uh we're on instagram uh too um so you can catch us there um you can catch us on spotify y'all um you can listen to us or you can catch the video there too so all of that and then, um, so, um, no one gave me, apparently none of these guys are doing anything, y'all, because no one gave me any media. I didn't they know don't that do I, anything. Yeah, I don't have any media. They don't, yeah, sorry. They don't go to exotic places like Alaska or they're not at every beer <laughs> like Milwaukee like Chris or, you know what I mean? They're not gallivanting in Montana like Landon, but you know, whatever. I, I mean, you already mentioned great taste. Right. That's the only, that's the only yeah, interesting thing on my agenda right now. I guess y'all are not doing anything and that's fine. Hitting, so I'll uh, talk about I'm what. Hitting, I'm doing I'm my 200th brewery in Wisconsin on Sunday. Well, wait, now it's not even your turn. Just I know. <laughs> you, well, you were you seemed like there was nothing to talk about, so I was gonna go ahead and just throw it out. Yeah, because y'all don't give me any media. Well, See, I don't have media is... for it. I, I'm about to drop all y'all, but anyway, <laughs> I'm going to barrel and flow, y'all. Nice. That is a great there you taste. Go. Will not see you at the great taste this year. I'll probably see you at the great taste next year, but barrel and flow. Is, in is the weather going to be better this year? Was didn't it get didn't it get stormed out kind of last year? Oh, it was or not, it not was stormed out, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm I I got through the festival, man, so I'm good for a good mess. Um, good. It kind of sent me home early, and that was fine. But um, hopefully it's better this year. But if not, it's cool. It's Pittsburgh, so I hope it always rains there. For the record, but that's a sports ball kind of <laughs> thing, so it's fine. Ignore me. Ignore me. But, um, fan, yeah. who, who we shouldn't ignore is Joel wow, because fair. not only has he been to Alaska, y'all need to get to his breweries travel thing. And respectfully, I know Joe could probably talk two hours about that. We should yeah. probably get him on a damn podcast so he can talk two hours about that. But uh, <laughs> check Joel's uh, social media for all that. But um, what else is coming up, Joel? You said you're gonna get to your 200th brewery. Yeah. Well, I said I I said after getting to a brewery in all 50 states, I didn't really have too many other uh, milestones. But I'm lining it up so that uh, we're going to my parent. We're going to Minnesota this next weekend and going on a fishing trip up the, up on the Canadian border with my my dad, my uncle, my brother, and my grandpa. Um, but on the way there, uh, my old hometown that I spent a decade of my life and from the age of one to 11 cashed in Wisconsin, which is, a, is a thousand people about half an hour east of lacrosse. And mm -hmm. there are two small breweries located in the rural areas around Cashton. Um, and I am going to be hitting one of them will be my 200th brewery in Wisconsin. What, what are, what are the names of those breweries? Right? Put joy farm, um, put, put joy, joy farm. farm? And brewing and their tap handles look like feet, um, apparently. 
So okay. I, I, yeah. And then the other one is uh, Alchemy Brew Pub. Um, they are technically in the unincorporated towns of Melvina and Leon, which are near. Which oh are, yeah. There's some Washington. names. Oh, Melvina. Yeah, there you go. Melvina and Leon. Yeah, my, my dad used to play slow pitch uh, softball when I was growing up in Melvina. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah. it's like an old lady so, named Melvina. I, I, yeah. They probably, that's probably. Are we sure it's not Melvina? And Leon was probably her husband. Yeah, Leon probably was her husband. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Leon and Melvina. <laughs> Leon and Mel, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're going to Leon and Mel. We're going to play Sheep's Head till 8 o'clock, and then it's going to be too late. Yeah. We gotta get oh, yeah. yeah that, that's my, uh, that's my I guess, announcement. I had great taste, and I'm still working on the book stuff. The book, book stuff's coming along, though. I got another meeting tomorrow, so that, that I'll have more updates on that, hopefully, coming down the line here. Nice. I don't want your feet near my beer. I'm... <laughs> well, I don't think the actual, like, they don't have, like, actual, it's not, you know... But maybe they are a mold of somebody's foot. I don't. I'll, I'll make sure to get good pictures, and then I can. You want some media, Greg? I'll send you some media. <laughs> they should do for their anniversary party. They should. They should do one of those. Ow! They should do one of those things where you, like, like the grape stomping thing. They should do that with like oh, hops or something, no. and mm, and like, no. and then brew a brew a beer out of it, and everybody would be grossed out. No. They the flavor anyway. would become from something else. Then I think. Keep <laughs> y'all's feet away from my beer. <laughs> This is ridiculous. James is James is still in the chat. He just drops a big old nope on that. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I assume <laughs> it's that. ridiculous. Yeah. Okay, Lynn. Then I hope I hope you don't have. Yeah, I hope you don't. No, have I'm I'm here. in. I'm doing. Uh, I'm in some talks with shooting some videos. Uh, unfortunately, everybody's really busy. I mean, fortunate and unfortunate. I'm really happy that these breweries that I'm in talks with are super busy. Um, it's good, especially in the times that we are in with some of the breweries around. Um, so it's, it's good to see beer flying out the doors, but, uh, it's, it's tough for me to shoot a video when they're that busy. Um, other than that, just once a week behind the bar at lazy monk. So if you're in town on a Monday, Tuesday, or a Thursday, you might see me behind the bar. Excellent. Charles yeah. Um, Milwaukee Magazine's no. uh, August issue is coming out. Um, if you're if you live out state, you might be getting it next week. Uh, otherwise, early August, obviously. Uh, cover story is tailgating, which I had a little bit of hand in, so wrote wrote some things for that. And uh, we will have uh, it's a good it's a good little package. And um, I don't know, it's it's a really solid Mill Mag issue, so you can look for that. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, see, see all the great taste. If you see me say hello, I might be in Tangier for the Dylan fans out there, but no, really, uh, come say hi. Just, I, I love talking to, um, I love talking to, uh, if, if you, if you sit through an hour and 27 minutes of this, uh, I want to hear about it and understand why, why you're why so you broken why your brain is so broken no not really but i mean like no i just want to appreciate you and and uh you know what at the great taste i'll even buy you a beer what a guy get it because okay. no i got it yeah what a guy what a guy and on that note um joel chris y'all have a great time at the hey, uh great here's, the, here's the feet here's the feet for you greg Oh, oh boy, yeah. those are like, those are yeah. really feet. Ooh. Holy yes. crap! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wonder if this is like a foot fetish situation. Right? I, I don't know. I'm gonna be. I don't know if I should ask like, or not. He's like pulling I, that I handle every every day. Every day he's like, mm, you know, got it. Thirty times a day. Yeah. Mm. So they're definitely gonna be in the running for my awards at the end of the year for most interesting tap handles. I yeah. Guess. Wow. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Are, are they like? Is there five? Are there five toes on that? We can't really. Yeah, see. well, it looks like they, it looks like the, the the nails are painted too. Or some kind of alien? Wow, that like is... jewel jewels on the nails. Oh, I gotta yeah. find out. I gotta find out more. Or maybe I don't. Maybe y'all should... are enjoying this too much. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not naming any names. I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And... Quentin Tarantino. Oh, this was awkward. Um. What an awkward way to end a badge of beer hour. Almost as awkward as Chris showing his underwear at one time. Remember that, Landon? Yes. Um, yeah. Did I just get up? Because I'm not wearing pants right now, I'll tell you that much. 
You had kind of beer shorts on. It was weird and awkward. Yep. Liney, liney underwear. Cool I don't know. Oh yeah, those. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the hot the, those look like the hot shorts, the heated shorts. Yeah. Yep. Hot yeah. shorts. I, yeah, hot shorts okay. doing a lot of heavy lifting there. <laughs> <laughs> the next batch of beer hour is <laughs> August twenty <laughs> first. Badger beer hour and a half. It's a Wednesday. Uh, I want to thank my crew here for uh, another great Badger Beer hour-ish. I want to thank our wonderful guests, Tommy and James. They were fabulous and fun. Um, and best of luck to enlighten. Um, Shout out to those guys for shooting straight about, like, uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't really know that we were going to get into, like, a family feud there, I, which I, I don't think it was really, you know, that. But, I mean, you know, like, there's... There's a lot of internal discussions that happen within breweries all the time. Yeah, yeah, Infinity Brick is one of my absolute like favorite, just like go to. Yeah. We we really didn't linger on that long enough. That's a bomb beer, and that is one like, of my. We, we were kind of talking about Spotted Cow a little bit, and then it's like yeah. I was kind of wait, trying wait, to. Which one? Uh, Cream City Bricks. Cream City Bricks. They're cream ale. Yeah, yeah. one of my favorite. I, I love that. I, 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 I wanted to spin that into a quick discussion about Cream City Bricks, but I miss it, and that's on me. Well. Okay. Yeah, you Cream missed it. Maybe next month. I'll see y'all guys next month. Thanks again, uh, Tommy and James. Thanks, Landon, Chris, Joel, for all y'all do for this project. We'll see y'all next month, August. Thanks for watching, 21st. all. 21st. Yes. Thank you, y'all. Cheers. Good night. Cheers. <laughs>